Well, it's that time of the year again where we get another major feature update for Windows 10. Microsoft does one of these twice a year, usually in the spring and the fall, and this is no exception. So this time it's the Windows 10 October update, very original naming, AKA version 20H2. Now the fall update is usually the lesser of the two major updates, so there's not a huge number of major changes or anything, but there are a lot of significant ones that you will notice, and we are gonna go over those. You'll notice them right away, and also there's lots of bug fixes in the background too. And if you wanna get this update, it probably won't be pushed out to you by force, which is good, so you can actually check in the Windows update and it'll probably show up as an optional feature update. So if you wanna get this, then you can do that. All right, so starting off, First up, we have a new start menu design, or at least a new look to it. You'll notice it now has more of a transparent background and it's more obvious if I put a white window behind it. And also you'll see that the icons on the left no longer have a box around them. It's just the icon of the program, which I think looks a lot cleaner. And you'll also notice on the right hand side, the tiles are more transparent now. Before all the tiles would just have a solid background, which was the accent color you chose. And now it's actually partially transparent using the same same accent color and they're calling these theme aware tiles, which basically just means they're basically the same color you choose them as. So if you go into the personalized settings, you can change that accent color and you'll see that the tiles will become a more transparent version of that color. So I do think this just looks like a more cleaner, nicer version of what we had before. And I'm definitely a fan of slightly transparent window aspects. All right, next up is a feature that makes it a lot easier to change the refresh rate of your monitor. From now on, there's gonna be a drop down box in the advanced settings in the display settings. So you get to this by going to system, display, and then advanced display settings. And then you can see at the bottom, there's a drop down that has all the possible refresh rates for that monitor, which I think makes way more sense before you kind of had to go into the control panel old settings and it wasn't that intuitive. And this is also good because there's plenty of cases of people who have bought a high refresh rate monitor and didn't realize that you did have to kind of go dig down in the settings to enable that higher refresh rate. And I actually did this at first when I first got years ago, 144 Hertz monitor, it defaulted to 60 Hertz and I didn't realize there was a setting. I was like, I guess it kind of looks different. And then quickly I realized that you had to change it. So this should make it a lot more obvious to people People who are looking in those settings and where to find it. All right, now before we continue into the rest of the features, I do wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is a great VPN service that allows you to protect your internet connection by essentially encrypting all of your outgoing traffic so it'll protect it from any prying eyes, even from your own internet service provider. And I've actually been a Private Internet Access subscriber since like 2014. You can see my billing history here to prove it, so I'm definitely a fan of it. And to use it, it's really easy. You just install the software and then there's a big simple toggle you can use to enable it or disable it. And you can also choose any of the servers across many different countries. And the same goes with the mobile apps. You simply toggle it on and you're good. And this is especially important on your phone where you're more likely to use Wi-Fi hotspots that are public and maybe not protected. It is available on all desktop and mobile platforms. So Windows, Linux, Mac, Android, iOS, all of those. Plus there's a bunch of additional features like a VPN kill switch that will prevent you from accidentally revealing your connection if somehow it drops. There's also the so-called PIA Mace feature, which can block trackers, malware, and more. And even advanced features like choosing the specific protocol for encryption, DNS traffic configuration, and more. It even supports peer-to-peer -peer connections. So yes, you can use it for things like BitTorrent. And of course, they do not keep any logs of any kind. Now for you guys, there's a special deal going on. If you go to private internet access dot com slash the Ojo. The link's also in the description. You can get up to 77% off the two year plan that comes down to just $2 and 59 cents a month. And that also includes three months free. So it's definitely a really good deal. Again, that link will be right in the description. Hope you check it out. And so with all that being said though, let's continue. All right, now the next change in this new feature update is that the new Chromium based version of Edge will now be the default on all new Windows installations. So before there was the Edge thing, which was its own version, but now it's based on Chromium, same as Google Chrome, which a lot of people do seem to like better than the previous Edge. And it also means that you can install Chrome extensions, I believe for the most part, even from the Chrome web store, you can now use them in Edge. So if you've been kind of dismissing Edge, then maybe start using the new Chromium based one. It's kind of like Chrome, but you don't have to have it tied to Google. All right, now the next feature is a new personalized taskbar experience for new Windows installations. So I need to point out, this is not gonna 
going to do anything if you already are running Windows 10 and you're just updating from a previous version. But basically what this just does is if you install Windows 10 fresh and log in with a Microsoft account, then it will detect any other kind of linked accounts to your Microsoft account and subscriptions, such as if you have Xbox account, it will actually put a little Xbox icon in the taskbar. Or if you're subscribed to Microsoft Office, it'll put links to some Office programs down there. And also if it detects that you have your Microsoft account linked to an Android phone, it'll put like the phone app, stuff like that. So it'll kind of detect what programs you might want to have in the quick launch bar and just put them there. But again, if you're not installing Windows new, you're not going to see any change. All right, so next we got a couple little changes to notifications. So now notifications, when they pop up and also in the main pane, it'll show a little icon of the actual program next to the notification. So it might be easier to see what program is popping up without having to read it. And also now when you do get a notification pop up, there'll be an X that's visible right there. So it's a lot easier to dismiss those without having to open up the whole pane and clear it out from clicking a little arrow from before. Moving on, we have a few changes to the Xbox app. I believe Xbox actually did get kind of a UI and user experience overhaul in general. So this kind of just is just timed the same as this update. But basically from my understanding, I didn't really look at this before, so I can't know for sure. But if you look at the Xbox app, stuff like the Game Pass window will look a little bit different and it might just look a little bit changed from before. All right, next up, Microsoft is continuing to move and migrate things from the control panel into the settings app in Windows 10. So the latest thing to move is the system menu. Now, if you click the system menu in the control panel, it'll just bring up the about page for your system in the settings app. So they did make sure to add any info that was displayed in that old menu, it now does show in the system app. And also they added the ability to just click and copy all that information, which I think should make it a lot easier for tech support people. You can figure out exactly what kind of version the person is running and they don't have to kind of read it out and try to figure out what you're talking about. I also do like the extra info they're showing. For example, it shows even the build number and the version. You can see here it now says it's 20H2, so 2020 second half. So it's easier to know exactly which major version you have, way easier than before. You had to type in like win version into the start menu and then look at the build number, which was not exactly descriptive, way easier now. All right, now finally, Windows 10 is now more tablet friendly. Apparently they added features like if you are using a tablet, it'll now automatically detect that. You don't have to go into dedicated tablet mode anymore, or I think you can if you want to, but it'll auto detect things. So if you're on a tablet, if you, for example, tap into a text field, even if you're on the desktop experience, it'll pop up the keyboard. There's also some changes such as a slightly wider spacing between taskbar icons. Same thing goes for Explorer. It'll just sort of expand things out a bit, make the hitbox, you might say, a little bit bigger, wider stuff between it, easier to just tap on. So if you are someone who does use a tablet for Windows 10, maybe you'll notice some better changes. And so those are the major changes for this new version of Windows. If you guys wanna keep watching, you can check out the previous major version update. I'll put that link right here. If you still haven't installed that, or you're just curious what that installed anyway. So you can check that out by just clicking that right there. So thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.